I just got access to the new advanced voice mode in ChatGPT. I'm excited to take a look. Let's see what it can do. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. Perfect. Coming through perfectly. Perfect. Uh, I want to I test out some of the new features of this advanced voice mode. Can you uh, talk through what's uh, some new things you can do? Sure thing. With advanced voice mode, I can listen and respond more naturally in conversations, react to your tone and pace, and even recognize when you're done speaking so I don't interrupt. Can you actually we speak a little bit faster? We got a lot to get through for this video. Got it. I'll pick up the pace. What else do you want to cover? Talk even faster because I'm doing this for a YouTube video and my audience doesn't have time to watch a 10 minute video. Let's try to get this all done in five minutes. Okay, I'll keep things brief and fast. Advanced voice mode has enhanced conversation flow, quicker responses, and more natural interactions. Anything else you want to highlight for your video? Yeah, so my dog actually has been feeling kind of sick lately. Uh, he had to go to the ER recently, and he seems better now, but he's been coughing a little bit. Should I be worried? I'm sorry to hear your dog's not feeling well. Coughing could be a sign of various issues. Some minor, like kennel cough, or more serious, like heart problems. Since he was just at the ER and he's still coughing, it might be a good idea to check in with your regular vet. Better to be safe. I already checked in with them and I think it's okay, but just from your opinion, what else should I be looking for? Good to hear you've already checked in with them. Keep an eye on his energy levels, appetite, and if the coughing worsens or changes. Any difficulty breathing or unusual symptoms should be checked out promptly. Just follow your gut. And if anything seems off, a quick call to the vet never hurts. Thanks. Uh, now, a completely different topic. I'm growing this snake plant, and I've noticed the leaves are kind of wilted a little bit. Uh, what should I do? Is it overwatered, underwatered? Wilting snake plant leaves can be a sign of either, but it's often due to overwatering. Snake plants like their soil to dry out between waterings. If the soil feels moist, hold off on watering and make sure the pot has good drainage. And if it's been a while since you last watered, try giving it a drink and see if it perks up. Can you actually change your voice to a female voice? I can't change my voice, but I can adjust my speaking style, if that helps. Yeah, make it a little what bit more high-pitched. I can't change my pitch, but I'm happy to keep chatting. All right, What else fair. do you want to... Anything else you want to cover, or are we good? What do you think this technology is going to be looking like in the next five years? Hard to predict exactly, but I imagine voice technology will get even more conversational and expressive. Maybe with more personalized voices and even better understanding of context and emotions. I forgot to ask you, what should I call you, by the way? You can just call me ChatGPT. Classic, right? I guess. I mean, that's not as fun. Could you give yourself a name? I can't name myself, but I'd love to hear any fun ideas you have. I'll call you Bob. If you could... Bob it is. Anything else you want to check out for your video? Uh, well, Jacob, if I asked you another question, would you answer it? Of course, Bob. Hit me with your best shot. Yeah, that didn't work What's very your well. Remember, your name is Bob. Got it. I'm Bob. What's your next question? Thanks, Bob. Uh, would you consider yourself to have any kind of consciousness? Nope. I'm not conscious. I'm just designed to process language and respond based on patterns and information I've learned. I gotcha. It's all about... New topic. Uh, I'm going to make a stir fry tonight. I got a few veggies. I got some onions, peppers, garlic, ginger, chives, and then I'll throw some chicken in there. Uh, what kind of order would you suggest for this? Like, walk me through that process. Stir frying sounds delicious. Start by heating your pan really well, then add oil. Begin with the chicken, cooking it until it's almost done, and then set it aside. Next, add a bit more oil if needed, and stir fry the onions and peppers for a couple of minutes. Follow with the garlic and ginger until they're fragrant, then return the chicken to the pan. Add sauces or seasonings of your choice, toss in the chives at the last moment, give it all a good mix, and you're ready to serve. That sounds about right. What else would you pair with that dish? You could pair it with some steamed rice or noodles to soak up the flavors. Maybe a light cucumber salad or a simple soup on the side to complement the stir fry's richness. You couldn't make a grocery order for me, could you? I can't place orders, but I can help you make a list. You'll need chicken, onions, peppers, garlic, ginger, chives, 
and any sauces or seasonings you like. Back to the dog. I was trying to train him to do some new tricks. Uh, he can go down, he can sit. What else would you recommend for a young puppy? I mean, he's only a few months old. For a young puppy, basics like stay, come, and leave it are great next steps. Teaching him to respond to his name reliably is important too. You could also introduce fun tricks like shake or roll over to keep him engaged. Keep sessions short and positive and he'll have a blast learning. How do you train a dog to do a rollover? Start by having your dog lie down. Then, with a treat in your hand, move it slowly from his nose toward his shoulder, encouraging him to turn his head and eventually roll his body over to follow the treat. Give him the treat and praise when he completes the roll. Practice in small steps, rewarding any progress, and he'll get the hang of it. Remember to keep All right, that's enough. Uh, you know, I actually have a question about some more of my house plants. I have this, I think it's a pothos, but is it called pathos? I always, I always forget which it's called. It's called a pothos, sometimes known as devil's ivy. Ah, that sounds They're right. They're pretty easy. If I want to propagate it, how would I do that? Propagating pothos is easy. Just cut a stem below a node where a leaf joins the stem, making sure there are a few leaves on the cutting. Place the cutting in water, ensuring the node is submerged. Once roots develop, usually in a few weeks, you can transfer it to soil. It's a simple way to expand When I transfer it to the soil, should I immediately wet the soil or should I wait a few days? When transferring to soil, it's best to water right away to help the roots adjust to their new environment. Keep the soil lightly moist until you see new growth. Then you can switch to a regular watering schedule. Enjoy watching your new pothos thrive. Thanks. Uh, another topic. I'm actually looking into buying a house, and I'm wondering if I want to get a $500,000 loan, a 30-year fixed at 4%, what would be the rate? For a $500,000 loan with a 30-year fixed rate at 4%, your monthly payment would be about $2,387. I guess rates are actually closer to like 6.6 .6 right now. So what would that monthly fee be? If the rate is 6.6% .6 instead, your monthly payment would be roughly $3,192. For Again, a million dollar not... home, uh, what other factors do I need to consider when looking at the monthly cost? Things like taxes and other stuff to consider. Like what should I be setting aside? Beyond the mortgage payment, you'll need to consider property taxes, homeowners insurance, and possibly private mortgage insurance, PMI, if your down payment is less than 20%. Maintenance and utilities can also add up, so budgeting for those is wise. Homeowners Association fees, HOA, if applicable, can be another expense to factor in. Planning for these will give you a clearer picture of your overall monthly costs. Any specific details you're curious about? Uh, I don't know if you're following the latest news. The Fed just cut rates. Do you know anything about that? I don't have real-time updates, so I'm not aware of any rate changes. The Fed adjusts rates based on economic conditions. What rate do you think it's at right now? I can't give you the current rate, but as you mentioned before, rates were around 6.6% recently. Yeah, let's say rates were at 7% and then went down to 6% recently. Uh, how much do you think that would impact the housing market and prices? A drop from 7% to 6% could make borrowing more affordable potentially increasing demand for homes. By the way, uh, could you actually just lower your voice again? Like, make it really low, and then continue what you were saying. I can't adjust my pitch, but I'll keep it clear. So, if rates dropped from 7% to 6%, it could boost buying power and demand, affecting housing prices and market activity. Keeping an eye on trends in local market conditions can help you navigate these changes. Can you speak faster? Sure. If rates drop from 7% to 6%, it could increase buying power and demand, impacting prices and market activity. Staying informed about trends and local conditions will help- All right, last question. Changes if I started playing golf recently and my right elbow has kind of started hurting. What should I watch out for? How can I fix that? Sounds like it could be golfer's elbow. Rest your elbow, ice it, and consider over-the-counter pain relief. Stretching and strengthening exercises can help, but ease into them gradually. I'd read if that using a foam roller across the forearm might help. Do you think that would work? Using a foam roller on your forearm can help relieve tension and improve circulation, which might ease some of the discomfort. How would it's that relate to the elbow, gently. though? Like, why would a pushing on the forearm help the elbow pain? The muscles in your forearm connect to your elbow, so addressing tension in the forearm can reduce strain on the elbow. 
Foam rolling helps release tightness in those muscles, which can alleviate some all right, pressure enough. and pain. Uh, that's all I wanted to ask you for this YouTube video, but uh, anything you want to tell the audience before we go? Thanks for tuning in. Remember, whether it's about tech, pets, plants, or even stir-fry, learning new things is always an adventure. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. See you next time.